Hi guys, I hope you have a nice day and I'm glad you're here with me. I will tell you today my opinion about the game Data Island 2 that I played, all the pros and cons of this game. Let's go! Data Island 2 is long way the title that we've been waiting for ever since its reveal at year 3 all the way back in 2014. Developmental issues and numerous hardlers made it look like Dead Island 2 would never see the light of day. After changing studios a few times and going quit for years, there are plenty of reason to be skeptical of how it would turn out in the end. It's finally here. Having spent so long in development, I wondered if we could base the original game. However, despite all its setbacks, Dead Island 2 runs well, looks great and gives you a lot of weapons and skills to tear the flesh off and eat carcass in style. Now, after having finally played it, I can happily say that the game has surpassed all my expectations, but it's also yet to leave me completely satisfied. Similarly, Dead Island 2 plays like almost no time has passed since the original was released over a decade ago. For those unfamiliar with Dead Island, the series follows several playable survivors in different settings that they find a way to survive and deal with a zombie apocalypse. Dead Island 2 occurs a few months after the original game's events. An infection has found its way to the sunny state of California, infecting everyone ray and turning them into grotesque zombies and monsters. You play as one of six survivors whose plane crashed while trying to escape the quarantine zone. You are eventually beaten, discover that you are immune and begin your journey meeting up with survivors to plot to escape. Players can choose one of six characters to play as, each with their own skills advantage and disadvantages. Each of the survivors is very different, packed full of unique personality and offers slightly different starting traits. So for example, some deal more damage from the O while others may heal better from attacks. But once you enter the blood frenzy proper, you'll soon be upgrading whichever hero you pick into a beefer fighting machine away anyways. It's all gore, blood and mayhem as the better you way through the post-apocalyptic LA in over-the-top starline. And it's great fun hacking, slashing and shooting various and dead monsters to beat in this carnage field gaming epic. Dead Island 2 in a first-person action RPG that's packed with a much dark humor at its booty parts. Combat in Dead Island 2 in utterly brutal, rendered in gruesome detail, We've had heads that explode and limbs that fly off for some time, but just that hang by a single thread of tissue. Eyes popping out of head and tiggling on the cheeks on the victim, pulsing organs that you can watch slow empty from inside the rib cage of the zombie masses. What about realistically burning flesh or flesh that peels off into piles of goo when diced in acid? It's absolutely disgusting, fascinating and incredibly impressive. It's total bloodbath, but that makes it work so well is that there's several gameplay. As soon as I encouraged my first and dead opponent, it was clear to see Dumbbuster, significant improvements to the gore. Even with the slightest hit to the head using a plank of wood, a shower of blood covered the nearby area, adding a layer of thin red paint to the ruined streets of LA. The zombies themselves are pretty incredible. While there are certainly repeated models all over the place that never matter. This starts with the standard walkers and runners and quickly evolves in big zombies that stomp off the ground, scream as they slow your attack and alert other zombies, big fat toxic spewing zombies, exploit zombies and more. While some are incredibly annoying to deal with, they are provided with own challenge to the game and make gameplay engaging. This means you have to learn their pattern with melee before getting the chance to fight them the easy way. Zombie sparks are also one thing that turks me in the game. Outside safe arrays, you aren't really ever safe. But this is proven throughout means that they are kind of annoying. You can open doors in the game, but it can't close them. Despite cleaning out of house, there is always the chance that zombies will have spawned inside somewhere and they will suddenly just find you. I don't find zombies in places they completely shouldn't be and they slightly bother me. On the bright side, there is absolutely never a shortage of zombies to fight or kill in creative ways. Dead Island 2 features incredibly entertaining gameplay. It features a great suit of melee weapons and a solid selection of fire aims too. Aside from Kirs, players will also have adds to a slew of weapons in the game. Melee weapons are your primary tool and you get a lot of play with modify. 
You start out with your typical mill weapons, but as you progress, you acquire more unique weapons. What makes the weapon system especially fun is the wizard selection of upgrades players can put of their weapons. These range from base damage upgrades to elemental stat type upgrades, adding new damage types to your weapons like electricity, fire, and toxic. Dead Island 2 is unapologetically violent and violently unapologetic, and you'll never stop marveling at the deliciously gory ways you can dispatch enemies. Fighting is fiercest and tremendously fuffling, which each weapon and each shuffle feeling meaty and satisfying, especially when hit your group and perfect that all important block. There are definitely times when the action can get a bit semi, but overall Dead Island 2 does a really good job of introducing new abilities, weapons and modifiers at a good pace. The game doesn't have great replayability, which may wrap some players the wrong way. Additionally, I like the first game Dead Island 2 doesn't feature an open world and instead it has several disjointed arrays, which players can travel between freely. There are lots of room to explore, do side quests and search for new weapons and resources. However, it can be easy to get frustrated running in circles as you look for ways into place you can't access until later. The problem with this system is that while it simplifies things for players, it also makes the game feel highly linear and makes traversal a hassle as players will have to get a specific race in the map in order to move to wherever part of the city they need to go. Visually, Dead Island is quite impressive. The game sports fantastically detailed character and exterior models, vibrant environment and well-designed zombies. The ghost system is also quite remarkable, as every blood splatter and several limb will not go unnoticed. The biggest visual downside is purely artistic, but the mirrors look truly awful. Not only does the character not show in them, but the flat copies of room on this place aren't convicting at all. While it may have been a little corny to smash them all, the game has so many oversized mirrors it's hard to, know, to notice the fake reflections. While the game is fully playable on your own, you can also join up in one or two other after the introduction. The co-op option where you play alongside Pals Minute has a long way beyond the core story. Depending on how much you engage with optional content, most players will get around 15 to 20 hours of Dead Island 2. Despite there being multiplayer characters too, there is no reason to play so the game more than once as the plot progresses in the same way. While I'm not quite at the point of finishing the entirety of the game side quest, I'd estimate most players will get at least 30 hours of the finishing everything. In all ways that matter, Dead Island 2 is somehow just more Dead Island. Despite the long stint in development hell on the developer switch, it's by no means a perfect sequel, but it does a great job of cleanly the spirit of the original, regardless. Despite its somewhat linear storyline, the game is thoroughly enjoyable and kept me coming back for more. I have fun with Dead Island 2, it's well and full of fun and mayhem. It jammed with Orest Gaming Clitch, but knows exactly that it's contained brutal carnage. It's almost impossible to stop smiling while playing, such as the slapstick loud of limbs flying over in every direction. So, Dead Island 2 delivers on its promise to be good, core fun, and provide a highly enjoyable experience with its several engaging gameplay elements that's especially valuable to Dead Island and zombie game fans. Its arcade feel combined with excellent graphical prowess provides plenty of ways to slay any undead opposition standing in the way. Dead Island 2 may not bring much that's new to the table, but what it does do, it does bloody brilliantly. And that's enough for me. Shambling its way back onto the sand, Dead Island 2 summons the franchise place as one of the most fun beat em up zombie games in the genre. That's all, thanks for the listening to the end. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please don't forget to leave a like, I would really appreciate it. And also subscribe to my channel and it will be motivate me to make more videos for you. Write and ask any question that I will answer in the comments below this video. Bye bye and I love you.